In this video series, we will go through the basic procedure for drawing a simple wall layout in Vertex BD for cold form steel framing. We'll start by creating a new project by going to the File menu, New, and New Project. In Project ID, we can give this project a short identifier with the name field allowing us to get a bit more descriptive. The Based On field allows the user to copy an existing or local project. So in this case we'll use a parametric template which will allow us greater control of the Z levels. Once done, click OK and that will bring us to the project data card. This allows us to enter information about the project itself including contact and building details as well as engineering data for information purposes only. Some of this information is carried over into the output, so drawings, uh, reports that can be disregarded if necessary. Click OK and we'll go into the project. So the first thing that's brought up is the drawing model pairs window. This shows the active modeling pairs that are available with a drawing for each in both architectural and framing as well as their respective 3D models. Here I simply click on the ground floor walls to be taken to the 2D drawing of that particular modeling pair. By pressing the F2 key I can toggle between 2D and 3D. We also have a model tree here on the left Tabs down at the bottom allows us to switch between the model tree and the project document browser. In the document browser we can easily select different drawings or models within the project or the different modeling pairs as well, whether it be the architectural layout, the framing layout, sketches or architectural documents such as drawing sheets and elevations. Reports are also kept here. As mentioned earlier, when you first start a new project, you need to select the number of drawing model pairs that are available. Go to the File menu, down to Project Drawing Model Pairs, and select Active Pairs. Here we have a list of all the available pairs that we have activated in the project, denoted by the checkbox. To add or remove levels, simply check or uncheck, and then click OK. If we press F4, you can see that the Draw Model Pairs window is updated also. The next part of project setup is to select the default wall heights for each level or story within the project. To do that, we can right click on the project name in the Project Document Browser and select Edit 3D Levels. This interface allows us to adjust the wall heights as well as the floor to floor heights for each level in the project. The preview panel shows dimensions for the wall heights of each level and also the floor to floor height. The easiest way to make a change to these is to just double click on the dimension that you want to change. So for example if I double click this ground floor wall height here and then I can enter in a new value for that and as soon as I click OK the preview panel updates altering the height of the building above as well as changing the finished floor level of the first story. For the fourth thickness itself you can select whether you want to fix floor to floor height and change the wall height or fix the wall height or room height and adjust the floor to floor height. So if you want to keep a 2.5 meter wall height, we can change this radio button to fix the room height and then we can select a different floor system in FFL1. So let's finish floor level 1 from the drop down menu. This will then push up the rest of the building maintaining the 2.5 meter wall height on FFL0. We can continue to adjust the rest of the building either by changing the floor to floor heights or by changing the wall heights and then adjusting the floor framing thickness as needed. Once done, click OK. The last step to setting up project before we start drafting is to alter the project parameters. Project parameters can be found by right clicking the project name in the document browser again and going to edit project parameters. You'll notice there's a parameter set for each level we have active as a drawing model pair, however most values within here are controlled by the 3D or Z levels we set up earlier. So we'll move on to wall framing parameters. These contain sets of rules for the framing of different wall types as shown by the tabs at the bottom. Each wall type has its own set of identical parameters to set up and these will be automatically picked up by the wall you've chosen from the wall library. So we'll just go through the exterior bearing wall type for now. The first section deals with the panel breaks. So there's a maximum and a minimum length there as well as preferred lengths of panels. Details cover the wall connections, whether this be a corner or a backer. Details can be chosen by clicking the row and then clicking on the diamond within this preview panel. 
and this works the same for corners as well. Finally the stud section allows you to choose if you have a single or double centre stud. You can also choose if the stud orientation is mirrored, your centre to centre spacing for your studs and the starting point of those within the panel. Once you've set all these up you can then click OK and we're ready to start drafting. This will be covered in the rest of the video series.